Well, as the stewards of our clients' assets, we need to always be aware of what it is that our clients want. And unsurprisingly, they want different things when it comes to ESG, which reflects their preferences, which in turn depends on, for example, what type of client it is or where they are. But one of the common themes amongst them that we are seeing is the desire to solve for multiple objectives, investment returns and sustainability. Clients are asking us to maximize returns for different levels and types of market risks and sustainability factors. This is where we see our role and our opportunity as an active asset manager, because it is what we do every day, maximizing returns while minimizing risks. It is harder in the case of ESG than it appears because conversations often get derailed by deba debates around the weight that we should apply to each of these objectives. But our clients don't want to forgo returns. They want to know how to be sustainable without hindering returns or at least minimize any return degradation. Our opportunity here is to help facilitate change towards a more sustainable future whilst acting in the interests of our clients. And this is what being a global asset manager like Janice Henderson gives you. When it comes to ESG investing, we act globally because we appreciate that no individual regional approach will work for all. Yes, indeed, in the US, the subject of ESG has been uh, heavily politicized, um, resulting in some extreme consequences for the investment communities in certain parts of the country. In Europe, um, there has been some cooling towards ESG, which was largely driven by energy security concerns, but it is still very much a priority across the continent. Curiously, just wanted to mention one fact. Um, in 2022, flows into ESG corporate credit funds have held up better than flows into non-ESG equivalents, including in the US, and this trend has actually continued so far this year. I think it is important to remind ourselves that ESG is not only about E or environmental, which has been essentially the focus of controversy in the US. It is also very much about S, social and G governance factors, both of which are absolutely instrumental in ensuring that a company is a long-term business success. So thinking about what has changed, it makes it harder to talk about ESG, which goes back to my point earlier that as a manager of our clients' money, we are reminded to keep in mind what clients actually want. But we also need to show our clients the meaning behind ESG and that it doesn't harm investors. In fixed income at Janus Henderson, our ESG investment uh, philosophy is integration over exclusion, which means that we allocate capital to issuers with varying ESG profiles, not only ESG leaders. We actively engage with companies with higher ESG risk profiles in order to understand how they're managing these risks, which gives us an opportunity to be more forward-looking, helps us identify improving stories. At the same time, it creates an opportunity to support transition. In reality, imposing a blanket exclusion on higher polluting sectors, for example, does not help solve for the broader environmental issues, whereas understanding transition and progress does. We work with companies, therefore, to ensure that the most financially material ESG risks are being managed thoughtfully and progressively, and we do this through engaging with them and following up on those engagements. It is true that traditional and original association of engagement and stewardship is with equity holders through their voting rights. However, as bondholders, we help companies access markets for financing their business activities and therefore have a great ability to play a key role in stewardship of our investee companies. For us in fixed income, engagement is integral to our ESG assessment and ultimately feeds into our investment decisions. We see it as fulfilling a dual objective, to ensure we understand how a company is addressing financially material ESG risks and to facilitate positive change. For instance, by challenging a company's targets and commitments, we help promote transition. 
We also bring into our engagement with companies the most topical ESG themes prevalent in the markets and which investors are concerned with, where they are financially material for companies' business profiles. Well, we constantly monitor the developments of the most topical ESG trends and issues that investors are concerned about. Ultimately, these are driven by broader societal influences and investor sentiment. But for us, it is important to make sure that we focus on what is important to our clients. So we speak to clients and analyze what questions they raise and what they focus on. For 2023, we have noticed the themes of biodiversity, human rights and labor relations with a focus on supply chain management and ESG governance. And these are the more prominent themes for 2023 from our perspective. By ESG governance, by the way, I mean greater scrutiny of targets and commitments that are set by companies. Asking them questions like, how do these ESG targets align with the overall company strategy? Or how is management being held accountable for achieving these targets? These are in fact our engagement themes that we have picked for 2023, that we will be focusing our efforts on across our investee companies, as far as they are material to their business profiles. Another important theme for 2023 is regulation. Both the volume of new key ESG regulation coming in or expected and its frag fragmented nature, adding to the complexity both for companies and asset managers. For instance, looking at the three markets, Europe, the UK and the US, there is no direct comparison between the EU's sustainable financial disclosure regulation, the proposed sustainable disclosure regulation in the UK, and the US SEC's fund categorization and disclosure regime. Being global in our approach, Janice Henderson is well positioned, we believe, to navigate this space because we can draw on our deep regional knowledge, giving us the opportunity to respond to this challenge. Yes, well, despite the challenges and some trends we have discussed in respect of ESG investing, one thing is clear, it isn't going away. Its pace may have slowed in the US, for example, and it may see some ups and downs still in its journey, but it is here to stay. Um, and global society, our end clients, continue to develop their attitudes towards a more sustainable future. So our focus must be on being constantly tuned into this development and on listening to our clients carefully. We want to make sure that we monitor the broader market ESG trends, including changes in sentiment and societal demands, and that we work with our clients to deliver ESG solutions that they are looking for and that are relevant to them. I think it is important to recognize that ESG is not a sprint. It is a marathon and it must be run, therefore, consistently and on an inclusive basis. And so we will continue to support companies, including those in more polluting industries, for example, that are making efforts to transition and to address key material ESG risks. And we'll do this through our investment and active engagement with them. And one final point, divergence between regions and our client expectations has made it even clearer for us that we should be transparent with our clients, which remains our key priority. This is how we can fulfill our role as manager of our clients' money, including in ESG space.